Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. It is important to check the instrument to make sure its adjustable components move easily, are free from plaster, dirt, and excess oil, and to make sure all the components are placed on their zero settings bilaterally. To zero the H2PR articulator, nine adjustments must be checked to read zero degrees. The incisal pin must be centered anterior-posteriorly and laterally, and all the thumb screws and thumb nuts must be locked by hand. The first adjustment is to unlock the thumb nut on the condylar guidance. Rotate the condylar guidance back and forth from zero to 70 degrees to see if it moves freely. Set the scribed line on zero and lock the thumb nut. The second step is to unlock the centric lock. Also, unlock the centric stop using the thumb screw found on the inner surface of the condylar guidance. Unless already positioned correctly, rotate the centric stop until its flat undersurface, the mesial aspect, is aligned with the zero reading on the protrusive retrusive scale. In this position, the undersurface should be in contact with the spacer in the condylar slot and the deep zero notch on the centric stop should be aligned with the zero on the horizontal inclination scale. After the alignment, pull the upper member of the articulator forward and tighten the centric locks bilaterally. The condylar elements must rest against their centric stops before tightening the centric locks. Next, unlock the thumb screw on the condylar posts. Rotate the posts back and forth. Do they move freely? Set the scribe line at zero and tighten the thumb nut. Next, unlock the lock nut at the base of the incisal table. Rotate the table to see if it moves freely. Set its scribed line at zero. Then, tighten the lock nut. Reduce the elevating screw of the lateral wings until they are at their zero setting. Lock the thumb nut found on the elevating screw. Next, check the length of the incisal pin. It should be 108 millimeters in length. The anterior posterior setting of the incisal pin should be checked as follows. Loosen the thumb nut found on the front of the upper member. 
Slide the pin so its top is flush with the upper member. Position the pin so the thumb screw is tightened against the flat surface found on the upper part of the pin. Tap the pin attached to the upper member against the incisal table. Check the anterior-posterior setting of the pin with articulating paper. If the blue mark does not appear in the anterior-posterior center of the table, it may be due to manufacturing error, the pin may be long, the table too high, the centric stops not set at zero, or the pin may be bent. In any case, you will have to raise or lower the pin until it does contact the AP center of the table, which is approximately 13 millimeters. The distance between the upper and lower members of the articulator should be about 110 millimeters when measured just behind the incisal table with the pin correctly positioned. The pin must also be centered laterally. If it is not, and the incisal pin is the correct length and not bent, the condylar shaft housing will have to be adjusted. Loosen the two locking thumb nuts for the condylar shafts found on the undersurface of the upper member. Check the play, the side-to-side -side movement of the upper member and the lateral movements of the pin on the table. The play should be less than 0.1 millimeters, but greater than zero, and the incisal pin blade should make complete contact between the inner edges of the lateral wings of the incisal guidance. To correct for excessive play or for incorrect lateral placement, the condylar shafts can be adjusted by rotation with a 732nd inch wrench. With correct adjustment, the pin should be centered laterally on the table. The condylar shaft housing will barely touch the condylar element. To complete the procedure, tighten the two thumb screws and check the lateral centering of the pin and the play in the upper member. The close-up shows the pin is centered on the table and there is little play in the upper member. If the incisal pin is not centered anterior-posteriorly, a change in the vertical dimension will occur if the incisal table is moved from the zero setting. Notice the change in vertical dimension. If the incisal pin is not centered laterally, a change in the vertical dimension will occur when the wings are elevated. If the incisal pin is centered distally and a positive inclination of the incisal table is required, the edge of the pin may contact with the edge of the table before an adequate protrusive movement can be accomplished.
If the condylar shafts and condylar elements are not at the centers of the condylar guides for all inclinations, a change in the vertical dimension will occur at differing inclinations of the condylar guidance. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.